Good morning. Well, 2020 form 45 CC2 depreciation and amortization. How can you depreciate an office furniture using the mid quarter convention? So how to depreciate an office furniture using mid quarter convention? We learn how to complete form 45 CC2 for 2020. Now we are going to use a few examples to illustrate or uh, to practice what we learn. So let's assume you have, you purchase and place in service three office furniture during the year 2020. And an office furniture is a seven year property class. So on January 15, 2020, you purchase a CEO chair for 4,000. August 1st, 2020, you purchase office chair for $1,000. And October 1st, 2020, you purchase office desk for $5,000. So how do you calculate the depreciation deduction for 2020? Since you purchase and place in service assets, depreciable assets in 2020, therefore you are required to complete Form 45 CC2 for tax year 2020. So how do you calculate the depreciation deduction? We assume you are not taking a special uh, uh, session 179 and you are not claiming or you elect not to take special depreciation allowance either. How do you calculate the depreciation deduction? That will go on in colon G for part 3 of uh, Form 45 CC2. We will have the uh, article on our blog ninasoap.com in case you wanted to read uh, all the I mean to read all of it. So what you will first do is you will um, keep a good record of those assets you purchase because the date you place them in service matter matters. So let's go to our depreciation spreadsheet to illustrate how you record your assets. So, and let's start, which one do you purchase first? That will be the CEO chair. And you can just look at the bottom of the spreadsheet so the CEO chair. So pretty much what you do is, let's go back. We have depreciation sheets. And when you right click, you click move or copy and we can just, you choose where you want it to put it. It's still on, um, that's the title of the worksheet we are in. But you check create a copy. So that means you just want to copy one sheet to use. So you can choose where um, uh, you want that sheet to be located on the same workbook. And we just click OK. So automatically, he put it uh, right before sale chair one, and you can just click twice in it and change the title to uh, the asset name. You can just call this asset one. 
and that way you have all the formulas if there is any and everything is uh, you know you keep all the formats on the spreadsheet and just and then you start using the spreadsheet so you purchase CO chair so asset name CEO, CEO chair date purchase the uh, January 15 2020 item uh, so it just copy back from the top cost 4,000 date place in service uh, January 15 2020 assuming we purchase it and just get a home ourselves from the store and just put in our home office then it's ready to be using your business so that's the date you place it in service it doesn't have to be the date you start using it but the date it was available in your business to be used that's the date you place it in service so that will be the same date assuming you went to the store you pay for the chair you put it in your car or truck and brought it to your business and put it there on packet put it together the same day available okay so percentage use for business is 100% I like to keep uh, what is meant for business I like to keep a business so let's assume it's 100% you use a hundred percent in your business so investment use 0% personal use 0% so market value or basis is just going to be that you have to put it in it yourself but it's going to be the cost because you purchase it the same year and start using it the same year so the value doesn't decrease by the time you start using it so it's going to be four thousand business cost i believe it has a formula is going to be the of um, market value times the percentage you use it for business business and investment is going to be um the percentage you use it for both business and investment times the market value is still four thousand. So, yeah, it's good to enter those information right at the start when you purchase the asset and start using using it, and you know you use a hundred percent for business. That way, you keep a good record of your assets. So, session one seventy nine at the end of the year, if you know. You are not going to claim session one, uh, 179, then it's, it's, it's zero. Depreciation, um, special depreciation, 50%. So we are not going to claim that. So when you choose now to claim a special depreciation, it's good to have a statement attached to your business tax return to mention that it is in one of the videos already that you elect now to claim special depreciation you mentioned the property class you don't want to claim it for and the business i believe let's see what we have in our notes here i don't know if i have it in the notes but it should be in one of our videos let's see okay so i didn't list I didn't put it in the notes here but yeah so it's good to uh, attach a statement to specify the asset property class the asset property class you choose not to claim special depreciation so that means all the assets you are going to depreciate you place in service that year you are going to depreciate that uh, that belong to that property class you are not going to claim special depreciation for them so it's not the um, objective of this video so let's just continue so you are not claiming any of those special depreciation so the basis for depreciation basis for depreciation is going to be your business and investment use the cost allocated the the portion of the asset the portion of the cost 
the asset costs allocated to business and investment use minus any special depreciation and any uh, uh, session 179. So session 179 will come out of it, special depreciation will come out of it. And since you are not taking any of those, the basis for depreciation is still 4,000. So now, property class. Well, let's assume you don't know what the property class is. Let's go to publication. Uh, 946 is very important. You have that publication on hand when you are depreciating, you are uh, completing form 45CC2. And we have linked to this publication on under free downloads on ninasoap.com. You don't need to enter your email address to access it. Let's go to page 29 here. And if you cannot easily locate the your assets in the property um, class here, then table, uh, the appendix at the bottom, you'll be able to locate it. We have videos that will cover that cover that session as well. So all the videos will be in the playlist 2020 Form 45-62. And by the time you watch those videos, you'll know for sure how to depreciate your assets. So let's, you can just look through, you'll notice that office um, chair is not in this, it's not three year property, it's not seven year property. So let's look for seven year property. And you see office furniture and fix fixtures such as desk, file, and safes. So they are seven year property. So that means on your form for the 562, it will be 19C rows that you will use for it. And let's go back again and see what they say here. Desk file safe. Yeah, I will say chair is pretty much included here. And okay, so in in fact, what let's keep it like that. But just assuming that you didn't find your property here, your asset there. Let's go to, let's see, CC9. And if I scroll it, it will be a little bit too long. Let's go to page 90 of the publication 946 and put a much scroll down. We have a video that cover uh, Appendix B, but when you don't find an asset in that short list, is is in the instruction for 45 CC2, but it is in the publication as well. When you don't find the asset there, you can come to table B1, and you have include furnitures. Features that are not a structural component of a building include such assets as desk, file, safe, communication equipment. Do not include communication equipment that is not included in other assets. So we will assume include furniture and features that are not structural components of a building. So we will assume it's included here, but we will come back to that assumption in another video. And let's look in information system here. So this is more computers, but they say excluded from this category are adding machines, electronic desk, calculate electronic desk calculator etc and other equipment described okay so we are going to assume our um, office chair is in in the list of the furnitures here 
because it's office furnitures, features and desk. So we will have another video that will cover table B1 and table B2. But for now, our office chair, it is a 70 year property class. So we will just put seven. A lot of time the property class match the recovery period. So I like to just um, have them there. And depreciation, modi Marcos is modified accelerated cost recovery system. So Marcos system, you have the choice between GDS, general depreciation service, and ADS, alternative depreciation service. Unless you are required to use ADS, chances are you'll use a, a GDS. ADS tend to depreciate far longer than GDS, general depreciation. A system and general depreciation system is uh, the session B part and session C is the ADS. So if you are required to use ADS, then you use it. Otherwise, I think you are just better off using the GDS. So GDS, we put it there. Now depreciation method. You have the choice between two hundred percent, one fifty percent, and straight. Uh, line method and we cover each one of them in a video you have the playlist 2020 form for the fast receipt depreciation and amortization for those videos so we are going to choose 200 uh, percent db that's the default you can choose any but you need to choose something so it's good to you know to 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 keep your choices and anything you are required listed it makes it easier to know to find the right rate to use to depreciate your assets so recovery period recovery period is going to be gds slash seven now conversion is a half year is it mid quarter well let's go back to our problem again you purchase an asset in January 15 and place in service that day. You place an asset purchase in service uh, August 1st. Then you did the same October 1st. By putting an asset in, in service in the last quarter, during the last quarter of the year, automatically you have to ask yourself if you need to use a, a mid-quarter a half year it's great to use half year but if you place an asset in service between october november december then you have to ask yourself if you fall back to mid quarter convention so let's look at all the assets um for the whole year is ten thousand assets you place in service and the one you place in service in quarter four is 5,000. So 5,000 divided by 10,000 is more than 40%. Therefore, since, um, and since you are now using and you're not taking any special depreciation, if you are taking special depreciation in session 179, you'll take those before you add all the assets together and then uh, do the division. Uh, assets quarter four divided by all the assets um, total so you don't take the special depreciation into consideration if assuming you are taking both session 179 and special depreciation you only take the cost of the assets minus session 179 the remaining you add them all for each one of the assets you add them all and then you take the assets in the you know the basis after section 179 you take that for quarter four divided by the total basis after se session 179 for all the asset placed in the year 2020 we have a video that covers that session as well and if it's more than 40 percent then mid quarter it is but the thing is we are not taking session 179 therefore we are not we are we are just going to use the cost so the total cost is ten thousand 
a quarter four asset, 5,000 divided by 10,000 is more than 40%. Therefore, mid quarter convention is what the diff that we will use. So that means you are going to use mid quarter convention for all the assets you place in service in 2020 and all the assets you remove from service in 2020 that you didn't fully recover the cost. Like you are supposed to depreciate it for more years, but you took it out early. So you use mid quarter convention for those assets. If mid quarter convention is what you're supposed to use for assets you place in service during 2020. So we'll go back to our spreadsheet. So that mean it's very important uh, you mention mid quarter convention and it's going to be for each one of those assets. So we need to know the quarter we place the asset in service. Using mid quarter, you have to know the quarter for every single one of those assets you place in service. So that assume you place the asset in service midway through the quarter you place that asset in service. So uh, for this one was in January quarter one. So we'll put quarter one and the table to use. So now let's go back to our table. And it will be on 70 of publication. No, it's too far. CC9. Of publication 946. So you'll go to Appendix A of publication 946. We know we want to you want to use general depreciation service. Depreciation method, you want to use 200%. The recovery period is GDS7. Convention, well, is mid-quarter. And the, the class is 7. So what is the quarter? It is quarter 1. So the table name is A2. If you want to use GDS 150% so for depreciation method and GDS recovery period 7, convention is mid-quarter, class is 7, quarter 1 will be, the table it will be A15. So you have 200%, 150%, and straight line for GDS to choose from. But you need to know the depreciation method you want to use, the recovery period, the convention, because that will determine which rate table you will use to depreciate. So in our case, it is the second row, mid-quarter, quarter one table A2. So when we go back to our spreadsheet, we have table A2. So what you will do is you have the table he, the table of, uh, of the depreciation spreadsheet you don't have the rates, you have to put the rates in it. So you will go to Tab, uh, we want table A2. So you scroll down past appendix A, past table A1, and that's table A2. So let's make our spreadsheet a um, little bit smaller here. But before we do that, so now that you find table A2, you have the year the recovery period and the years you'll de depreciate the asset. So it is a 70 year property. And they say mid quarter convention placed in service first quarter. So you are looking for a 70 year property class. So the rate under 70 year is what we will copy and it's going to be a rate one, two, three, four, five, C78. So you'll depreciate in eight years. 
so we want to copy the rates and because you are going to keep the asset in your business and depreciate it and not changing how you are using the asset therefore the basis is not going to change let's just make our spreadsheets okay so year one is 25 percent let's see here and year two 21.43 no year two and year three 15.31 and so forth and year eight is 1.09 so you will copy the rates and have it all that way you can calculate the depreciation deduction for all the years and have it set so now that we are done with CEO chair we have a desk we can go back to our problem and see what we purchased second office chair so the office chair And we are just now I'm going to go a little bit faster because you see how we record our uh, assets you'll do the same for the office chair purchase and place in service August August 1st a hundred percent using the business it costs 1,000 we are not taking this session 179 no special depreciation 2,000 50 uh, percent of special depreciation So the basis for depreciation is 1000 and what that is uh, the office chair so as of the CO chair is a office furniture so it is in uh, property class 7 GDS is what we are going to use and depreciation method 200 percent so 200 GB and a recovery period GDS is general depreciation system slash seven convention mid quarter because that's what we are going to use for all the assets we place in service in 2020 assets you have been depreciating um, prior years you are not going to change the way you are depreciating them that's why it's good you copy all the rates and and calculate the depreciation deduction for that asset so that you don't get confused when you for future years you have that set if the basis does not change and so it's just for the asset placed in service in 2020 or removed from um service early in 2020 so uh month quarter quarter three is it i think so yeah so table to use so let's go look for that table but once again we need to go to appendix a so we know that we are going to use mid quarter our gds a recovery period is not changing we what we are we are replacing service is within you know three to ten years recovery period and in our case is office furniture so it's seven and the depreciation method is not going to change the depreciation system is not going to change so it, it, our everything where we depreciate is going to be in the second on the second row but the quarter is just going to change so quarter three the red table is a4 let's double check to make sure it's quarter three quarter three so the red is a4 so we will go back and look for that red table a4 So table A4, 3, 5, 7, 10, 15, and 20 years property, made quarter convention place in service in third quarter. So it's seven year property in our case, an office chair, 
So we need to copy the rate under 70 year colon to our spreadsheet, depreciation spreadsheet. And we wrote down A4 for table use for our for future reference reference so now um he, i think i didn't mention it before but there is a formula that is pretty much um pulling some information from left to right so official the depreciation amount the de um th so this one is more the total of this so the rate so we have 10.71 let's see for year one 10.71 and year two 2551 we have that and all the way to year eight 5.53 so we have all the rates this said and then we'll go to the desk so the desk 5000 placed in service October 1st use 100% in the business and no special depreciation no section 179 therefore the basis for depreciation is still 5000 it is uh, 70 year property class the depreciation method you are going to use is GDS that you choose is GDS depreciation system is GDS and the depreciation method is 200 declining balance 200 percent declining balance recovery period is GDS 7 and the convention is mid quarter and is it is the assets that put us in that category of convention so all the assets are going to be mid quarter all the asset placed in service in 2020 so quarter uh it was a october so that's quarter four let's go look for the table we will use but before we do that you need to find the name of the table in appendix a so depreciation system gds Depreciation method we want to use 200%. Recovery period GDS 7, it is there. Mid quarter con convention and asset class 7, month or quarter place in service quarter 4. Table name A5. So we write table name A5. On our spreadsheet, depreciation spreadsheet, and now we will go look for table A5 under Appendix A on publication 946. And table A5 is for mid quarter convention for asset placed in service in fourth quarter, and our asset has 70 year recovery period. So 70 year, under 70 year, we have the rates. Year one is 3.57% uh, and year eight is 7.64%. So we'll copy all the rates under year seven of A for of table A5 to our depreciation spreadsheet okay now that we copy all the rate we can now calculate the depreciation deduction and we can start with the sale chair and the depreciation will use the depreciation the basis for The basis for the depreciation you will use that basis for every single one of the year you will recover the cost the basis should not change once the basis change you should stop using the rates and calculate the depreciation deduction on your own 
So for year one is going to be 4,000 because that's the basis for a CEO chair, 4,000 times 25% for year one. And year two will be 4,000 times 21.43%. And for year one is going to give you 1,000. For year two is going to give you 857.20 so every single year you will take the depreciate the basis for depreciation times the rate of that year and by the last year 4000 times 1.09 percent in year eight will give you $43.60 and when you total all the depreciation deduction of for that asset for all the years it should equal four thousand the depreciation the basis for depreciation if it does not equal that amount you start with you either have a uh, copy the wrong rate or did something wrong so you need to double check and then we have depreciation remaining balance in the next column after depreciation amount and pretty much is just taking the first year is going to be 4,000 minus 1,000 for the first year depreciation deduction and with the spreadsheet it tends to automatically calculate things for you so sometimes you have to adjust it And for year two, the remaining balance pretty much is going to take 4,000 minus the sum of the depreciation deduction you took for year one and year two. Or uh, it's going to be 3,000 minus, you know, uh, year two depreciation deduction. So when you do the calculation right, by year eight, your remaining balance for depreciation will be zero. And then the last column is depreciation year or tax year. So it's 2024 year one all the way to 2027 for year eight. That way you know how many years you are going to depreciate the assets and you have the depreciation deduction calculated for every single one of those years. And if we assume you only have one asset, to, uh, that you place in service, let's go back to Form 45CC2, you will fill up, you will complete Session Part 3 with that information. So pretty much the, the, the depreciation deduction you calculate, that will go in colon G. And if you have... Um, more than one asset in one um, class year I mean you can group them if they have the same property class and same recovery period same convention and same depreciation method but you could I mean decide to enter to complete form for each one of the assets as well so pretty much, or if you only have one asset, the information on the spreadsheet will come on, uh, will be used to complete session B. So you have the basis for depreciation for this particular asset, I believe is 4,000. So that will be there. Recovery period was seven. Convention was GDS last seven. Depreciation method was 200 space DB. So and here depreciation recovery depreciation method depreciation system recovery period and convention let's see do we have should have convention yeah convention will be mid quarter convention is mid quarter depreciation method is g um 200 space db Recovery period is 7, DDS 7. Let's go back and check. Recovery period, DDS 7, yes. 
the convention mid quarter. So you enter those information and then 1000 is the depreciation deduction. So 1000 will go assuming I'm the what yeah 19c. So depreciation deduction will be 1000. So you will enter that there. And now let's go back to um, office chair. That's the second thing we place in service. So pretty much you'll repeat the same process. The table has formula to pretty much calculate uh, the depreciation deduction once you enter the rates. And it has formula to calculate the depreciation balance as well. But the, the table tend to automatically copy um, one formula and, and spread it all out. So you have to make sure the spreadsheet is calculating it right for you so that you don't make mistakes. So uh, the full depreciation deduction should equal 1000. So we have the formula up to summarize it. If it's not, then something is wrong. The rate is not correct. Uh, the table is not using the white. So you might double check because the, the, the basis for depreciation should be the original basis for depreciation. That's what you use for every single one of the year. If you just want to calculate the depreciation balance to double check to measure by year eight, it is zero. And the tax year is going to be uh, 2020 all the way to you know 2027 and we'll do the same for the desk so for the desk well once you put the uh, depreciation rate it's going to record the depreciation deduction and it should total to 5,000 and the depreciation balance should be zero by year eight and keep in mind that the depreciation balance, the total of them won't be the same as 5,000. It is the depreciation deduction, all total, that should equal the basis for depreciation. That's the, the, the 5,000 we are trying to recover over those number of years. So that's the depreciation deduction that should equal to the basis for depreciation. Then you have the tax year, and every single one of um, a tax years that you file for, you just take the amount for that asset you are depreciating, and it will go on your business tax form where depreciation should go. Unless you place asset in service that year, and you need to a complete form for the 5CC2 and if that's the case then it'll go on line 17 on line 17 mark all the deduction for asset placed in service in tax year beginning before 2020 so assets you are recovering uh, their cost you place them in service before the tax year you are filing for they will go on line 17 and assets you place in service during the tax year you are filing for they are the one that will go in session b of form 45 cc2 that's their first year of being depreciated they so you want to show uh, the detail of those assets and after that year if you place asset in service and you need to file for five CC2, then they will go on line 17, their total. And for assets you place in service during 2020, if you have more than one, that belongs to one, class, one property class, and they have the same recovery period, same convention, same depreciation method, you could choose to group them or not so thank you so much for watching uh, thank you for your time we thank you very much you all that subscribe to our channel we thank you for all your comments as well
am afiavi ojune libre men creators of libun consulting llc youtube channel libun consulting llc podcast nenasup.com our blog you have links to publication 946 on nenasup.com as well as links to form 45 cc2 and the instructions as well they are under uh, federal forms and instructions you don't need to submit your email to access our free downloads and we do have our online store liberdownload.com for our digital products liberlabel.com for custom apparels and liber outlets for resale products and ninasoap.com for our natural products. Thank you.